Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chump Chat. It's your boy, Johan Gomez, and my co-host, Chris Kuchar. For this episode, we have a very, very special guest. We've only had one female guest so far, Jessica McDonald, World Cup player, World Cup winner. And now we have potentially the next World Cup winner here, the next superstar, the next face of the USWNT, Jaden Shaw. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Thank you so much. Of course, of course. And for those of y'all who don't know, a lot of people don't know, I've known Jaden, or well, our families have known each other for quite a while. I think I met her when I don't even know. She was like maybe six or seven. Now it's like a decade. Um, we we grew up a lot playing, not me playing together, but with Jogo. Uh, I wanted to ask you real quick. A lot of people don't know this throwback. I don't know if after this show drops, the nickname will get big again. But you used to go by Jamar. What happened to that? <laughs> I didn't like it anymore. I mean, I'm still an Neymar fan, 100%. That's my guy, but I don't know. I wanted to be Jaden. <laughs> so. I respect it. I respect it. It's funny, though, because I was telling Chris, and he was making a little bit of a joke, because obviously Jogo is now known by as Jogo. Yeah. Um, and I think you guys kind of both came up with those nicknames at around the same time, because you guys were playing 3v3s like week in, week out together. So yeah. I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, I only knew him as Jogo. So it was like, it was weird that people were like, that's Jonathan. I'm like, I don't know. That doesn't fit. <laughs> well, yeah. I think we have to bring back the JMR. I think that should be the title of this video, actually. JMR joins Chum Chum. Oh. I think it'll be nice. <laughs> well, Jogo, I feel like is like, it's still his name. I feel like JMR, it's like, it's Neymar's name, but just with a J in front of it. <laughs> oh, name. <laughs> Is there a nickname that you like now that you go by or just Jaden? No, it's just Jay or Jaden. Yeah. I want to ask about yesterday because this is perfect timing. Obviously, for those who don't know, three for three, the new superstar in the league. She just scored last night in Snapdragon Stadium's first game with the wave, uh, the winner, 1-0. And how tall are you, by the way? Um, five, six on a good day. <laughs> five, six on a good day because she was getting up yesterday. Winning that header, perfectly placed header into the corner. How are you feeling after that? After that, was there a lot of adrenaline going in? I saw your celebration. It was really nice. What were you thinking? Um, it was like a surreal moment. There were so many people there. It was so loud. Um, we actually came up with that celebration like five minutes before we went on the field. Like it was crazy. Alex was just like, guys, I have a celebration like that we can do. And I was like, all right, bet I'm going to do it. So I was like, let me just run to the corner. And then everybody um, joined in with me and the crowd loved it. So, uh, so what's it what's it like playing with Alex? Like, is she, is she definitely the leader on that team? What, what's that experience like? Yeah, I think we have a lot of leaders on that team uh, or on our team. Um, Alex, especially like she's just a really good person to play next to. Like she works her butt off, but she also like expects us to, to go with her and like you know, I think it just like brings me to another level being able to play with her too. Definitely, definitely. Are you so you scored your three for three? You scored one goal in each game that you played with them, correct? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, are you feeling more of a confidence boost from that, or is that pressure to kind of keep performing that way weighing down on you a bit? Um, I don't think it's pressure. I think it's just like something like a goal set for myself. Like, mm -hmm. um. I mean, I'm happy, like, scoring one goal every game, but I do want to break through, like, that one and get maybe two or three and just, you know, keep pushing. There's, you know, plenty more to to get. Um, Gosh, to that confidence is really sudden then. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I want to take it back a little bit. Obviously, what you're doing now is, is crazy, but um, I want to take it back to the beginning, like we were talking about before, 3v3s. Growing up playing with guys for a lot of your childhood, playing with Jogo, hanging with Jogo. Don't tell Jogo. I said this. We have to cut this out. You were you were better than Jogo back then, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you were literally at that level, and you were younger than Jogo. You're you're younger. So how do you think playing with guys has has helped you and your style now, or even like the futsal side of things? Do you think it's made you tougher, more technical? What do you think? Um, I think like all around. Like I mean, we played three v three. So yeah, we played futsal. Like. Um, just, yeah, it definitely, like, helped my technicality. Um, I think playing with boys made me a little bit more fearless, like, more independent as a player. I feel like me, like, I'm comfortable, like, you know, being in a position where I can, like, maybe score a winning goal or whatever because, like, you know, just being in those situations where 
um, you know, having to rise above your own level. So I think playing with boys definitely helped with that. Um, yeah. So. so obviously you have the nickname Jamar. You played football growing up. How much yeah. do you think that technical skill um, that you gained from playing football helps you um, in your career right now? Oh, yeah, it helped me tremendously. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today without futsal. Um, I would recommend it to anyone. Um, it was probably one of the greatest um, parts of my life. Awesome. What? When did you start shying away from that? Because I know me and Joe kind of went to, to FC Dallas and we stopped playing. But I know you stuck around like you and Joe were part of the FTSP program for a little bit. For those of who don't know, it was like it's like a essentially a residency, but for yeah. futsal players at City Futsal. Um, how long did you stick with it until you were kind of like, all right, I'm just going to go full time outdoor? Um, It was kind of like it was kind of like a, a merge into outdoor. I was starting to like train outdoors. Um, I can't remember exactly what age I left, but um, I don't remember. But yeah, I just like kind of slowly was like training outside. And then once everybody kind of started like going away from the team, then I kind of moved to um, solar and then move to FC Dallas and then back to solar. So. Yeah, I wasn't sure how that process went because me and uh, me and Joe were talking about it this morning, actually, because I was like, oh, do you have any stories about Jaden that like I can bring up or something like that? And I wasn't sure. I know I know he knew. So I was asking him like about the whole FC Dallas and Stoller thing because I think Dallas just breeds ballers because obviously you're coming up now. And then I don't know if you know, I mean, I'm sure you know Diana. I don't know her personally, but she grew up. Yeah, and she's scoring a lot, and she's also from FC Dallas. But would you credit more of your upbringing to FC Dallas or to Solar? Um, I think it was all timing for me. I think my first years at Solar were very character building because I wasn't. I mean, I was the youngest on the team. I wasn't like playing much. I wasn't getting you know uh, much exposure out there and then when I moved to solar then I became more of like the leader on the team or sorry FC Dallas I became more of like the leader on the team and we were kind of struggling at first and then eventually we won uh the first year of DA and then um a couple years after that uh when I ended up having to play like down into my own age uh then I moved back to solar um, and then I played up with them because I wanted to be on the older national team. Um, so I was playing with those girls that are in that pool of players. And then um, I was able to get into the, I guess it was U17 national team at that time. It was a year older than me. Um, yeah. But that was like mainly the main reason why I went back to solar, just so I can go up an age group for the national team. I read somewhere in the mix of all that you – got called up to PSG to go train with them, correct? Um, yeah, so I went when I was, like, 14. Um, I went and trained for about 15 days um, during their, like, preseason. Um, yeah, I stayed, and it was a really cool experience. Um, yeah, I definitely, like, I probably, if I was older, they probably would have kept me. I mean, I would have loved mm -hmm. to stay and all of that stuff, but, you know, I was too young. So. so I mean, you're getting you're you're getting called to train with PSG, obviously with some of these amazing teams. Um, how does it feel to finally be at that point where you're getting some of the more global recognition that you deserve after these um these recent matches that you've had? Um, I think it's great. I mean, my my goal is to play overseas at some point in my life, so I think that this is just a great like stepping stone to get there, and getting to the full women's national team is a goal of mine too. So. I think this is just like a, a great place to, you know, uh, start my professional career. You have any dream club overseas that that you've always had your eye on? Um, probably right now, um, Lyon has always been one of my favorites. Lyon, uh, PSG, and Barcelona. There you go, there you go. Well, <laughs> I I want to ask you something because like I think I'm pretty well educated in in women's football but I want to see how you see it in your eyes so me and Chris was talking about it I generally don't know what you think but for okay. me I know um Trinity Rodman for example is nominated for the Ballon d'Or and for women mm -hmm. and that's crazy to me because in my mind that's like the equivalent of someone from MLS being nominated but I know it's not the same because mm -hmm. the the NWSL is like probably a top five league for women like how do you see that would you, how would you rate that league in terms of global 
um, on the global stage. I know the Champions League now, now in Europe is growing a lot. And like, for example, Barcelona is a huge team now. Like they sold out the Camp Nou. 90,000 people went to go watch them, something crazy like that. So how do you see your the level of your league compared to others? Oh, I think that this game here is growing so much. I think the women's game in general is just growing so much. So um, definitely the NWSL is a top, top five league, like maybe like even higher, you know, um, the the recognition of the women here are getting, it's getting better, even like the full women's national team, um, you know, just, just the, the exposure that we're getting is, it's amazing and how much it's growing. Um, I think the ball and door nominees are, are amazing. And I think that that's like a really cool opportunity. And it's also a goal of mine to be, you know, in that pool. So um, yeah, I think this, it's great. You're, you're kind of in this position where um, both soccer in the U.S. is uprising and growing a lot quicker, but not only soccer um, for men, but soccer for women is also increasing at an insane rate. You said you scored in front of over 30,000 people. Um, it was last night, correct? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, w what can you do um, throughout? You have a long, you have a long, long career ahead of you. What can you do um, personally to maybe help uh, grow the sport even more? Um, I think like my view of the game is just like, like women can do anything that men can do. So I feel like, um, you know, just changing maybe the perspective that people see women's soccer as, you know, like me growing up, I watched men's soccer, like my whole life, like Neymar, like I said, like these guys are going into the professional like realm, like so early. And mm -hmm. I feel like that is something that like the women definitely can do. Like it's something that is is possible and i feel like me and olivia moultrie are are paving that way and changing the minds of um or at least the perspectives of uh people you know that are coming after us that have like the set goals for women and like the pay is is good and it's getting better and mm -hmm. um that it's like something that you know people can look forward to and try and achieve try and achieve yeah, a thousand percent. I I think um uh, I mean you see Trinity Rodman's deal. It's it's very public. So I mean, yeah. no shine away from that. That's that's groundbreaking. You know, that's mm -hmm. a groundbreaking deal that I'm sure is is in the future for you, especially if you keep this up. Or even like the huge equal pay now with the men's and the women's team. That's something that will definitely affect you in the future. Um, mm -hmm. so that's absolutely enormous. But you kind of answered it a little bit already. But I wanted to ask you. So I saw a TikTok video the other day. It was the UCLA women soccer team, and okay. it was that it was that trend where like you walk by and the media team asks you like a question and you answer it to the camera, or whatever it is. Um, and so the the question was a simple one like who's your idol in football? And for some reason, to me, it was surprising that most of them, the ones that were answering it seriously, were answering men. And yeah. to me, that was just weird because I was like, man, they don't have like women like that they look up to. It was all like Messi and all the same as guys. And so I want to ask you if. I guess you say yours was Neymar, like you watch men mostly, but how do you feel that like maybe with your performances and the way that it's changing, the landscape is changing, like do you hope to maybe be, when that when that same question is asked 10 years from now, the girls are saying Jaden Shaw, or even when guys' teams are asked, like who do you look up to, maybe they're saying Jaden Shaw instead of other guys, you know? Yeah, I was going to add on to that and be like, yeah, like little boys, if they want to like, you know, me being their idol or like, a women's footballer being their idol like that's insane um I think that would be a so like so cool um you know I guess revolution of the game um sorry what was the first part of the question no it just I think it was just I you answered it just kind of like you know how do you see changing the landscape and maybe being like I said being little kid little little boys idols or, or little girls idols yeah yeah I mean I think like, that's one of my main, you know, things that push me to go harder in the game is just, like, knowing that there's, like, little girls out there that are, like, looking up to you and they want to be like you. And and they see, like, what you're doing and they're like, I want to do that. And I think that's, that's so cool. I mean, me having a younger sibling, it's just, like, I think about that all the time. Yeah, you have a younger brother, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're already starting off strong. I'm sure you're his idol, so... I'm sure he's going to grow up bragging about you to all his friends and then maybe they'll be your fans and they'll look up to you. So yeah, that's, a, that's yeah. a pretty good start. 
But speaking about your family, I know them pretty well. Um, and this is a question that Chris had, but I genuinely don't know. Do you live by yourself out there or how does that work? Um, no, it's kind of my family is kind of back and forth right now, but they're starting to settle here with me. Yeah, they'll be with me. OK, do, do they plan on uh, if, if there was a transfer in the future, you join a new club? Do they plan on doing that for a while or just until maybe you're 18? How, how have you all discussed that at all or how's that going to work? Um, knowing my mom, she'll want to follow me everywhere. So <laughs> um, but I mean, I kind of just leave it up to her to whatever mm -hmm. she wants to do. I mean, like I would be cool either way. Like I don't mind living on my own. Um, I feel like I can handle it. Um, I did it for a little bit and with the spirit. Um, so, I mean, I've gotten a taste of that, and I think that I can handle it. Yeah, Shout I out, Miss Ann. <laughs> I, know, I know lots of uh, players growing up, especially when they start so young, they miss out on maybe some experiences that people going through the normal graduate high school 18 thing people may go through. Uh, for example, Christian Poos, like I know the night before a game, he had to fly out on a jet to his prom. Um is there experiences like that that you um, ever get a little upset upset that you might be missing or are, are you too focused in on the moment and you're just happy to be right where you are? Um, I think when I was younger, I had more of an issue with that. Um, it was definitely hard, like growing up, like my all of my teammates, like, you know, going to a homecoming and like having those school friends. But I think after so many years, like kind of being without it, you kind of learn to grow and and um grow fond of other things I guess like I knew that my priorities were different and where I wanted to be was different than a lot of people that I was with so um they understood that and I understood that and I'm grateful for it so so I, I know Johan you went through a similar process but you had Lone Star High School out there what what are they what are you doing for high school how did you already graduate how's that working out uh I do online school so I've been doing that since um middle school so I just do that. I can take it with me wherever I go. And then I'll just, I'll um, uh, graduate in December. Awesome. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm a 23. I'm a class of 23. So I would graduate next May, but I'm graduating early. So I graduate in December. There you go. That, that'll definitely help. Well, yeah. what, are your, what are your plans, though? Are you, um, and you don't have to say this on camera, if, or you might not be decided yet. Um, do you want to keep going into into doing college or university online or do you kind of want to take a break for a little bit from school? Yeah, I was planning on doing university online. Yeah. Okay. So there then, you go. That's a perfect segue though. Speaking of university, you obviously had to turn down that scholarship you got from UNC. Um, growing up, was was your goal more aligned with college soccer or professional soccer? Um, and what ultimately led you to where you are right now making the decision that you made? Um, yeah, like, like I said earlier, it was like my perspective growing up was like, women didn't really go pro before college. So it was kind of like, oh, I'll go for like, a year or two years, and then go pro go to the draft. But I think as I got older, and as I saw, you know, the game evolve, and, you know, other things, other people doing or Olivia doing it. Um, I think that, like, I saw myself being able to handle it and being able to be in that environment. And that was partially why I was you know, going to the spirit to train just to see if I could hang and do this day in and day out. Um, and I loved it. So I kind of made that decision. And UNC, they were so supportive of me. I'm really grateful for them. I still, you know, talk to them every now and then. So yeah. you, you said you're you were highly considering continuing and doing college. Is UNC online an option? Is that is that what you're looking at? Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought in depth of what kind of college I'll be doing mm -hmm. online. Um, I think just whatever way I can get a degree, um, yeah. necessarily through a specific university, I don't think. And an alternate university, me and Jay would have, would have like crossed over one year at UNC, maybe who knows, but, um, cause me and Tanner, me and Tanner visited together at UNC back in the day, but obviously we're <laughs> like four, four years older than you, but, but yeah, I want to talk about, I want to transition into hardships, hard decisions, sacrifices. Obviously, you turning that down is a huge sacrifice. I mean, when you walk into UNC, people don't know this. When you walk into UNC, the men's soccer program is good. It's really good. So when you walk in, but all the banners you see are the women's soccer championship banners. It's crazy. It's like, I don't even know how many they have. It's like, they're so proud of that team. So I know that was a tough decision. Anyway, 
the last i mean i know one of the last times we spoke like kind of in depth was or i think you had recently gone surgery on your acl something like that that yeah. is horrible for for a footballer for anybody how yeah. did you bounce back so well from that because i know you were training a little bit with shout out ricky and uh, i think <laughs> coach cruz um yeah. to come back from that and now, I mean, we can we can confidently say that you're doing all right. But how do you bounce back? And what's your advice, maybe to young footballers, anybody who's dealing with something like that, that's kind of knocked them down a little bit? And how do you get up from it? Um. Yeah. So I tore my ACL back uh, April 2021, and then I got surgery in May, and then I played my first game on my birthday in November. Um. I think I had a lot of support um going into it um it was definitely like really really hard for me because I felt like I was doing really well and I was you know progressing well um before that had happened but at the end I think that it's like just another bump in the road I feel like it was God's timing for that because I came back and a couple months later I was training with the professional team so I feel like it was just something to raise my level a little bit more and just make me more aware of my body and like how to take care of it and how to be a professional. I feel like prepared me for that. Um, my advice to people that have gone through similar things, um, I think just keep pushing, taking it day by day. Um, I think for me, I try not to look too far into the future just because when you think of what, six to nine months, it's like a crazy insane amount of time. So just take it day by day and you know, set your own goals and yeah, don't rush it either. Don't rush. Cause I know mine seemed kind of fast, but I promise I wasn't rushing at all. I went with what my body felt like and, you know, I listened to what it had to say. That, I mean, that whole mentality is pretty incredible coming from you. Someone who's 17 accomplishing what you're accomplishing. You think being a young player, um, that mentality is especially important. Oh yeah. 100%. Um, I think, a lot of times um, people, I guess, around my age can, you know, um, take it too hard or like, you know, feel too much pressure. And I feel like if you just take it off of yourself and just kind of take a step back and realize, like, just be grateful for what you have and, you know, just know that, like, you're still a kid. Um, mm -hmm. It'll help you get through. I like that. How important is is uh is confidence for you as a as a youngster? Um, how how cutthroat is it like when you're playing with adults compared to maybe when you're playing your own age down down with your own age, like you said? <laughs> I didn't mean to say down. <laughs> um, but I feel like confidence is a really important thing because like it shows when you play, and I feel like I try to find the balance between, you know, confidence and um, I guess arrogance because there are some some people that maybe can be like too confident in it. Um, that was, um, and it could be like, you know, detrimental to your career and it shows on the field. Um, I think my confidence is more just like in my own ability and, you know, just like that I can like do what I am trying to do and you know, what the coach is asking me to do. So, um, yeah, I like, yeah, <laughs> I think I have a good amount of confidence. Myself. Would you say your confidence has definitely increased um, given your, the recent history of your career? Um, com yeah, I think so. I mean, I think confidence comes with, um, you know, preparation. I feel like I have a really good environment that I'm in and mm -hmm. it, you know, it gives me confidence knowing that I'm playing with the best every day. So when I go out on the field um, in a game, then I know that I, I prepare for this moment. Yeah. I mean, I know I know your family well, so I know they'll keep you 10 toes down humble. But, yeah, I think maybe sometimes people can kind of be afraid of, like, someone who's so young and so confident, so good, and they might try to, like, hinder that. Um if I could say anything to you is just stay true to yourself, stay confident like you are, like just balling out. And I think you said there's like, yeah, there can be a thin line between confidence and arrogance. But I think for any anyone in this sport and, and the United States, I think we need more people like that who are like, you see the highest level players in the world, like Ronaldo, even Neymar, who you look up to are, are kind of players like that who play with a little bit of maybe arrogance. That's what some people call it. I think it's just extreme flair and confidence. So you've always yeah. been that way. I remember... 
always you were always playing up with the guys, just always doing moves, skills. This, this girl's a five star skiller from out out of the womb, literally. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Chris had a question here, and I want to read it out. He said, in most sports, you see young prospects kind of, you know, carrying maybe a worse team in the league, stuff like that. Maybe Luca when he joined the Mavericks, they weren't as good. He was carrying them on his back. You're carrying the league's best team. <laughs> <laughs> uh how does that feel like you know you just joined but you find yourself in the starting 11 obviously that's subject to change but your performances say otherwise you know how does is that like all too fast or do you find yourself just going right into it right with the flow um I feel like it's an amazing opportunity I mean like Casey is an amazing coach and I feel like really grateful to be able to be in the starting 11 and on such a great team um, I wouldn't say I'm leading the team or, like, you know, doing any of that because, um, again, like, there's so many people on our team that contribute. Like, even our game changers, like, they come in and they, they make an impact and it shows on the field and that's how we're getting through games. So I feel like um, it's just a great opportunity to be on this team and in the position that we're in right now. Obviously, San Diego, y'all are first in the league. Um, you already clinched playoffs. How, how do you think that whole experience is going to um, attribute to your career? Do you think that'll um, having that experience while young, you think that'll really help you out down the road? Oh, yeah, for sure. Being in those high pressure moments, uh, I think it'll be amazing. I'm so excited for playoffs and just being able to experience something like that and having the crowns that we had like last night, um, just mm. being able to play with that like every game. I think that would be insane. Yeah, I want to take a quick moment to say whoever media trained you did a great job. She had to make sure that she said she's not carrying the team. So we got to put that out there. She's not carrying the team. She's humble, very humble. But yeah, I'm excited to see how the how this playoff experience is. But just before we start wrapping this up, I think a lot of people want to know what exactly what exactly happened with uh, the Washington Spirit. You said you were down there training for or up there training for seven months. Is there any mm -hmm. uh, particular story that led to you not signing there? Um, I think it was just like the the process of the league and everything because like if I were to go to the draft it would have been anybody's pick for example so it was the same with mine even though I came in like mid-season um, so it was just you know San Diego got my rights and um, yeah I mean I'm really grateful to be here so um, yeah I loved my stay at Washington though um, they were all so nice to me and they really welcomed me and helped me grow so much. So, yeah, shout out to them. And, yeah. Shout out to them. You just scored on them, but, you know, their yeah. loss, I guess. <laughs> 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 um, not This has all been very positive, obviously. You're, you're a budding superstar, everything like that. But here at Trump Chat, we're very real. And so I, I, we have to hold you accountable. Um, are you coming back? Congrats, by the way, on being going to the U20 World Cup. Um, congrats on that experience but I think the I think it was uh, getting knocked down in the group stages wasn't what y'all expected how do you deal with something like that and how does that make you hungrier for the next opportunity that you get with the United States yeah um, I mean it was again it was a great experience but um, I think that we all could have performed better um, at least myself I feel like I could have done better um but again, it's just all a part of the process. I mean, I don't know if y'all know I can play in another U20 World Cup in the 2024, I think. Um, so I think just like working towards that and being in the environment that I'm in, I feel like it'll definitely help me prepare to be a leader on the team um, for the next cycle. And we, we can leave this in or out, but um, I know in men's soccer, you typically see a lot of, uh, a lot of players who are more club over country. Um, it's a lot. Obviously, club soccer is um, the, the biggest stage for men. Um, for you, would you say um, you value them pretty equally or is, is there one or the other one team or the other that um, you you feel more passion for? Um, definitely playing for my country is like amazing. I've always dreamt of doing it. I mean, having my first camp when I was like 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. I think I've always just had the goal to play for the women's national team. So I don't think it's ever one or the other. Um, I mean, I would always love to play for my country. So it's a good answer. Like I said, very well media trained, but this is the last 
uh, question. It's our signature question before we wrap this up. But I just wanted to ask you, what's your definition of success? And do you think you've achieved it yet? My definition of success. Um, I think my definition definition of success would be just having an impact on the next generation after you um, would be success for me, at least. Um, I feel like that's kind of what I'm working towards now, not necessarily for like myself, because I feel like just being able to play the sport is good enough for me um, and take care of my family and all that stuff. So I feel like success for me would just, you know, being able to make an impact on the game after me. And you think you've achieved success? (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Okay. Been what, like three games out? No. (laughs) There you go. That's fair. Um, but yeah, I guess I think that's all we have. I think your Instagram will be popped up throughout the video. Um, everything else, your your socials will be plugged in the description. Everyone, I think everyone will know your name so soon. But if you don't, go show her love on her Instagram, on everything. She's the next big thing. Um, and yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as we always say, go find your own success. Deuces. <laughs>